This will make Adam Ida Celtic's record signing. It's a big leap from, from there to £9.5 million. There was no, like we've seen with Jota and Carter Vickers and Bernardo, there was no price agreed for a permanent purchase at the time of the loan deal. The board are in control of this. They've got the ability in this next 18 days to go and prove everybody wrong. What's happening folks, welcome back to the channel, we're here to react to the news breaking last night that Celtic have finally agreed a deal with Norwich for Adam Ida. It looks like the fee will be £8.5 million up front with a further £1 million quid add-ons. That's significantly higher than we thought it might be at the start of the summer, but it looks like the saga is finally going to be over. Uh, personal terms now being agreed and the hope is that Ida will complete a, a medical this week and then be in the squad to face Hibs on Sunday, so it's movement, it's progress on that front. This will make Adam Ida Celtic's record signing, which is in stark contrast to how we thought this might play out when we first heard that link with him towards the end of the January transfer window. He had such a transformative effect on the back end of last season, scoring nine goals, but big goals as well. Um, it's not just the number of goals in that space of time, but it was the importance of them. The last minute winner at Easter Road, the two goals at Fir Park, which turned the game for us, the last minute winner in the cup final. Um, as Brendan Rodgers said himself, he was a catalyst for us in the back end of last season. So it's good that we're finally getting movement on it. And I'm relieved that if it does get concluded this week, we've still got a fortnight or so to try and sort out the other areas of the squad that we need to uh, improve on this window because there's no doubt we've let this go on too long. We haven't acted decisively enough. Um, and in fact, we'll come to talk about the fee in a minute in more detail, but um, that could, is part of the reason that we've ended up here, I think. Um, had we bid somewhere a wee bit closer to Norwich's asking price earlier in the window, we might have been able to get it done. Who knows? But we'll come to talk about the fee in a minute. Also, Boston Lawal has left permanently uh, to Stoke, which we'll discuss as well. And then we'll come on to looking at the next priority areas, which you all know uh, before this transfer window closes. And by the way, as you can see in the corner of the screen, there's 18 days to go in this transfer window. Um, not a lot of time at all uh, and still plenty of work to do for Celtic so there's been a lot of reaction to that fee which as I say is higher it's higher than we all thought it was going to be going back to January where there was talk before Celtic were in for him that there was a, a bid from Hellas Verona for three, a, a loan with an option to buy three and a half million pounds before he was linked to Celtic um, it's a big leap from from there to nine and a half million pounds um, but I think that's of Celtic's own doing partly because there was no, like we've seen with Jota and Carter Vickers and Bernardo, um, there was no price agreed for a permanent purchase at the time of the loan deal. Um, whether that's because the loan deal was rushed through in those last days of the window, we don't know. I know that uh, Ida had four years to run on his Norwich contract, um, but I think we left ourselves open to that because he ended up having a brilliant loan spell with us. Um, and then we felt the brunt of that because we've had to, we've had to pay such a high price for him. Now, don't get me wrong, the thing that stands out here, um, even though it's it's higher than we expected to pay, is you have to remember Celtic's financial position, which we keep going on about on the channel. But also, if we just look at on your screen now, some of the recent player sales that Celtic have had in the last 12, uh, 18 months, um, you've obviously got Jota in there, who's the big one, £25 million to Aleti had. But aside for that, you've got Abada, who went for £10 million, around £8 million to Charlotte. Um, just this season, O and Haxabanovic have moved on for around a couple of million quid each. Turnbull moved on in January for £2 million. Starfelt went to Celta Vigo last summer for £5 million. The club have made a lot of money in player trading in the last 12 months. Um, we have to remember that. And again, the backdrop here just this summer is the Matt O'Reilly saga. Um, Atalanta coming back with a, a fourth bid. Um, talk of maybe a fifth bid now, it's getting ridiculous. I think dealer need to just um, come up with the money, meet the asking price or forget it. But if we lose Matt O'Reilly for 25 million quid before this transfer window closes, we're going to be in the region of a high net profit in terms of players trading for this summer as we were last summer as well. Despite the fact we brought in nine players last summer, um, the club still made a healthy profit in terms of players trading. So yes, the fee might be higher, 
but we have to remember that Ida is a proven player for us and the club can afford, the club can absolutely afford to make this sort of signing. He's young, he has got development in him. Whether we come to sell him for a profit or not, I don't know. There is talk about a 15% uh, sell-on clause being added in by Norwich as well. Whether he improves to the point where he attracts the sort of interest that O'Reilly is just now um, and we end up selling him for a healthy profit, I don't know. But there is no doubt we need a striker. He is proven in terms of the impact that he had last season. Um, and I think we have to accept the price as it is. It's better, as I say, to do it now uh, than to wait until the last two or three days of the window um, and, and then pay this sort of price and you've spent the last two or three weeks of the window negotiating on it. That's the problem for Celtic. It looks like this summer they've spent a hell of a lot of time negotiating the deal for Bernardo, where they did get Benfica down from the original €6 million Euros asking price um, and then a whole chunk of time uh, on this Ida deal. They've been waiting to go back in with that second offer. Um, that was rumoured to be around £6 million just before the weekend. And then this uh, final deal, which has been agreed now, uh, eight and a half plus another million pound in add-ons. Um, so I think that is that is what it is. Um, the club need to accept that to get the, the players they want in, um, they're going to have to go and pay the money. And if you're going to do it for a player, it might as well be for one that you've already had on a loan spell and you know fits with the manager, fits in this squad and has proven that he can score big goals for Celtic. So I'm relieved. Let's hope now things really move quickly. I don't want it to be another Bernardo situation where the deal gets agreed, but it's still another 10 days until he gets unveiled as a Celtic player. Um, if things are done now, if that deal is agreed, get the personal terms sorted, get the medical done. The player wants to come and join Celtic. Um, let's get it done this week and then move on and hopefully we can start to look at these other priority areas starting with left back which is now the big one because we only had one striker um, if he does come in this week that will tick that box I know there's talk of trying to get a third striker in um, but I think that's way down the list now the next priority is left back we've got one fit left back at the club and Greg Taylor can't play every single minute of every single game this season there's absolutely no two ways about that. Um, relatively quiet in terms of the rumour front for left-backs, but that's got to be where the club's attention moves to now. Um, and again, they've got to move quicker. They've got to be decisive. They've got to have a list of targets there. Um, the, the lack of noise on the left-back front would concern you less, this late in the window. There was a link to Hugo Bueno from Wolves, um, and I don't know for whatever reason that, that didn't really get off the ground, but it looks like he's going to go to fire order, I think it is now. So, so that's dead in the water, but there hasn't really been anything else aside from that. There was a link to Owen Beck from Liverpool, who was obviously on loan at Dundee last season, um, a, a journalist in Liverpool, saying that Celtic were some way off the valuation of £3 million to get back to the club on a permanent basis. Um, now, I know that people are unsure about whether Owen Beck is the, the quality to come in and, and be a Celtic left-back. I know he's a, he's a young player, he's got a lot of development and learning to do. He impressed at times for Dundee last season. Um, did have a, an injury that kept him out for most of the second half of the campaign. But um, if Celtic want him, if Brendan Rodgers wants him, if we've identified him as a suitable target at left back, again around three million pounds is just an amount of money that we're going to have to we're going to have to go and pay if that's the player we want. Um, that's where we need to be decisive. That's where we have to get deals done. Um, I don't buy into this talk that transfers are so complex that they just have to take three and four and five weeks. Yes, I'm sure there's a lot to it, but you see clubs all over Europe um, when when rumours come out and they're linked with players and it gets done inside a week, that can happen. I think Celtic just have to go and be brave and be decisive and stump up the asking price for some players. It's good that it looks like we've done that with Ida, um, but now we've got to go and be brave and identify new players new players that we've went and scouted that we we feel fit into what Brendan Rodgers is trying to do and actually improve the team um, and then be brave enough to go and pay the money. Talking about the likes of two, three million pounds for a player, Boson Lawal has moved on permanently to Stoke. He's played next to no first team football for Celtic. He obviously had a, a good loan spell at Fleetwood last season um, and he's moved to Stoke for a fee which is believed to be £2 million. Um, it was also reported to be between 2 and £3 million, which I think is good money for a player that has barely kicked a ball. He's a young player. Um, Brendan Rodgers saying at the start of pre-season he wanted to have a look at him, um, see if he could play his way in to, to being a squad player for Celtic this season. That hasn't materialised, and I think um, to move a youth player 
on like that when Brendan Rodgers clearly doesn't see. He made that comment, didn't he, halfway through pre-season that having a talent isn't enough and you've got to work um, to play in this Celtic team. So I don't know. I think that was Lawal and, and maybe one other player as well. So um, I think it's good to move someone like that on for that. That's a healthy fee. And again, you're talking about player trading. You're talking about the money we make for players when we move them on. And then quibbling over a couple of hundred grand or two or three million pounds for someone that we're trying to bring in. Um, we've got to be confident in our targets and just go and, and meet valuations because time is ticking um, and we don't want to come to the end of this transfer window and have another situation like January where even after either came in on loan, the board released a statement saying we're frustrated at the lack of business that was done. We know it's inefficient to sit on this amount of cash. Um, that means nothing to anybody, that statement doesn't mean anything. Um, the board are in control of this. They've got the ability in this next 18 days to go and prove everybody wrong, um, to go and show us that they can do proper transfer business, that they can act decisively, that they can give Brendan Rodgers the tools he needs to improve this team um, and for us to make strides this season. Because let's not forget, bringing Bernardo in and hopefully now bringing Ida in only brings the squad up to where it was at the end of last season. We've replaced Segrist with Sinisalo, we've replaced Joe Hart with Kasper Schmeichel, we've brought Paolo Bernardo back uh, after his loan spell and now it looks like we're going to bring Adam Ida back after his loan spell. The squad is, in terms of raw numbers, the exact same as it was at the end of last season. Now we have to go and kick on and try and improve that. There's absolutely no escaping that. Um, and we cannot close out this window not having improved, not having added new, fresh players to the team that can improve it. That is the big question mark for the board in this next 18 days. Uh, there have been some Twitter rumours uh, coming out this morning. We've been linked with Robert Skov and Renato Tapia as well, um, who are both both free agents, I believe. Um, Skov's a wide player. Tapia, a defensive midfield player from Peru, who has been at Celta Vigo. Um, again, they look just like Twitter rumours to me uh, here saying nothing really concrete to them. Um, if there is anything and it starts to move, we'll bring you some more detail on those links whenever we can. But um, glad that we've got some movement on either front, hopefully. They, we can move on now, um, we can put this behind us, we can move on and we can bring in, as I say, that fresh talent that we need to go and improve this squad. Um, it's really difficult to come here and talk about transfers um, as often as I would like because I know that I'm a broken record and the lack of movement um, becomes so frustrating and you almost feel that you're just coming here to repeat everything you said in the last video. We know what Celtic transfer windows are like um, and it's difficult to come and talk about it and just regurgitate the same stuff. So hopefully that changes in the next couple of weeks um, and we get some new players to talk about um, and we can find something to get excited about before this transfer window closes because once it closes we've got the derby, we'll have the Champions League draw at the end of the month um, and then it's all systems go, three games a week and that's where the squad is going to get called into question. That's where any areas that we've not improved are going to get put under a microscope um, and Celtic, given the position that we're in, um, better be prepared to improve those areas before we step on uh, to that European stage uh, in September. So there you go, that's it uh, for this transfer update. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you happy with the fee for Ida? Um, if not, let us know. Uh, and if not, why not? Because it's no your money. Uh, like the video as always. Please don't forget to subscribe and we'll be back with you very soon. Thank you.